everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bitches RV down here at the uh, one of Forest River's many, many plants, taking a look at a brand new back to basics budget beater right here. This is the 174 BHLE. Um, this model right here, it's, it's about connecting with your family and not like, you know, spending time watching flat screen TV and that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that kind of camping either, but that's not what everybody's looking for. Like if uh, you, you're trying to just get your family out, make some memories, uh, but you don't want to sleep on the ground. You don't want to deal with a pop-up or a hybrid, but you're also trying to do the, you know, trying to be a, 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 a camping baller on a budget. That's where this one's going to come in right here. And it is a bit of a departure from what you see from a lot of the mainstream camping series. And there are some indications as to things like this that are more budget friendly are really trending up right now. One of the things I really like is they've done something here that a lot of people have been asking for. They went with a sofa, basically, instead of a dinette. Now, in point of fact, it's a little bit more of a bench, and that's the thing. Everything they've done on this was all done with a budget focus. And the thing is, in what they've done, they've peeled like four or 500 pounds out of this compared to what a normal FSX would weigh. So this thing comes in just a little bit over 2,800 pounds empty weight, and that is fantastic. Now there's not really options and swaptions on these. These are like a cookie cutter punch out. They come the way they come. Now you might have noticed a little bit of a costume change in the background right here. Salem and Wildwood are the exact same thing. They both make the 174 BHLE. It's the exact same camper. The only difference is just what they look like on the outside. And I thought it'd be kind of a neat little a B one two punch comparison for you to get to see that because there are a lot of people who want to say oh well the uh, the brand a is a little bit better than the brand B or whatever that's a bunch of crap they're the exact same thing and I'd rather shoot you straight so that you know exactly what you're getting for your money and if you appreciate that hit that subscribe button let's see what she has to offer your family now a, a great deal of today's video is actually going to be pointing out the things on this that are very simple, very basic, not over the top, awesome sauce and amazing. And my goal is not to like shellac this RV, but rather to acknowledge the fact that you folks work really hard for your money, so hard for it, honey. And uh, I, I wanna treat you right. And, uh, and I wanna be fair and real about this thing and tell you what it is and what it is not. Now, already we saw something on this that I think is really cool and exciting. And there, there are some very good points on this RV and there's some very hard decisions that you may have to make on this RV as well. But I like this instead of the two bench dinette that adults can really not even fit into. They went with a sofa basically over the wheel well. Now, I want to be, again, clear about this. I, 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 just, I just use the word sofa because, yeah, that's kind of what it is. It's a glorified bench. It's not really a sofa. But if you are stuck inside on a rainy day, it might be just enough to get you out of here. Now, the RV has virtually no campsite window coverage. But over here, you do have this giant window arrangement, which I think is actually very, very cool. Some folks are going to ask, well, why didn't they put that on the other side of the RV? We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get outside of the uh, camper. Now, these um, LE models actually have a, uh, a slightly different interior decor from the rest of the stuff. It's almost like last year's kind of light gray tone versus the very light wood tone that, uh, you know, the, the newer ones have. You do still have a full-size roof air conditioner. And up top here, this is also a pretty interesting find. You do have a powered roof vent, albeit with a small fan. That doesn't make it hard to upgrade. And that is actually maybe one of the interesting redeeming qualities on this camper. Because it is built with such an aggressive price tag in mind, there are little things like a small vent fan sometimes instead of a big vent fan. Well, if, if you're okay with like most of the stuff that you see here, but there's a couple little odds and ends and doodads like that that you would prefer to see changed over, you can do so on this and, and, and still be way, way less than like a, a real crazy high-end heavy equipped camper uh, right from the factory level. And maybe that's what you prefer. Um, you know, but, but maybe you're just like, I just want basics, but I want a nice fan. Now, this is an interesting thing right here. 
Um, I've only seen one other manufacturer do this uh, previously. This RV does not have a traditional propane furnace. It has that electric space heat and bunion burning toenail toaster right there that we call a fireplace. What that means though, is that this RV, if you don't have park power or a generator, this RV does not have heat. And that is a small, like almost like dorm fridge. That is a residential power only mini fridge. It is not 12 volt. It is not uh, propane. This is a little camper made to be used basically in parks. And um, otherwise you're going to need a generator for it. So kind of keep that in mind. And similarly, it does not have massive holding tank capacities or anything like that. You may notice too, it does not have a microwave or like major like entertainment center focus although the tv hookups are over that way so pardon me but they just left this open this is a very classic camper design right here and i i like we use the microwave when we go camping so i i would have to think about that but the fact is once again if i wanted to i could bring a microwave and i could set it up on that shelf and I could be good to go. Or a toaster oven or some other appliance like a giant Keurig coffee machine. It's an open space and I'd be kind of curious, what would you put over there? It'd be an interesting thing. Now it does not have basically any counter space, but that's the thing, kind of like no microwave. I think this is a little camper intended for camping function. You wanna you know, go to a park and sleep your family off the ground, uh, but you wanna cook off the, uh, you know, the fire outside. That's kind of what this one's going to be. But if you need to <laughs> bathe a baby or a small dog or uh, soak some pots and pans, you do still have that big um, farmhouse uh, sink, farm sink, along with these sealed edge kitchen counters. Two burner vertical stove. Um, what, what's the better way to do this? Should the stove be by the door or should the stove be by the refrigerator? Should they flip flop the stuff basically and i i never really exactly know the answer uh to that as i mentioned not a big entertainment focus floor plan but when you're sitting here on the sofa if you're gonna throw a tv in it that's i guess about as good as it's gonna get and and i would call that like rainy day survival you know if you just absolutely have to whoa, almost slipped and fell um <laughs> The, uh, if, if you have to be in the camper on a rainy day, that could be the way out of Dodge. Now, this, this camper is seven and a half foot wide. So what that means is they had some space, a little bit of space there for at least a small hanging cabinet closet. Might be just a, a, a little mini closet for some jackets by the door. And by the way, without Googling it, do you know the difference between a jacket and a coat? Because often we use the words interchangeably, but they are actually not the exact same meaning. Um, it doesn't have a full pass-through because the bed doesn't go all the way across. Uh, but that also means we, we've got a nice little like pocket here for shoes, which uh, I, I think could be kind of handy dandy, kind of cool right there. Now, um, again, they never went over the top with anything. And part of what that means here is if we start up top and taking a look at the storage, you've got <laughs> the gravity-friendly automatic closing uh, cabinet doors, which basically means they don't have any kind of gas thread. I'm not trying to oversell that. And you'll see that over the kitchen as well. Although I noticed the overhead kitchen one can almost kind of turn on and off that light, either that or it was just totally blocking the light. I'm not exactly sure which. But then um, down here under the kitchen, a very pleasant surprise. It actually does have a pair of full extension drawers under that stovetop. There are so many little campers like this, especially very price sensitive campers that will do like one cabinet door and no drawers. And I, I really respect what they did here. Now, if you notice, like above the fireplace, below the sink, it kind of looks like they wasted some space. What is not obvious is that is where the sink plumbing sticks down so they really couldn't use that uh as open face storage or anything like that um if they wanted to so it's just kind of one of those interesting uh little things to sort of uh keep in mind there now to get the next set of shots i did need to flip into ultra wide angle mode but i wanted to show you something um kind of cool here they still gave us a cargo bunk function. It doesn't have an exterior cargo door. You need to take the bottom mattress and throw it up top, but frankly, that can actually be kind of cool to make that more comfortable and then just leave the bottom open for cargo. If you've got dog kennels, if you have um, 
cat litter boxes or if you have like fancy dancy e-bikes or something like that and you want to store them inside of the rv and not outside if if you don't like a cargo bunk door because you're afraid that your son is gonna get out of the camper in the middle of the night and go gallivant around with the girls in the campground uh after everybody goes to sleep <laughs> the reason i know that happens is because that was a problem with my older brother <laughs> My parents would tie, like, empty soup cans as, like, a security alarm to the outside of the camper door so that he couldn't, like, sneak out. Uh, anyway, he always said that he was he was going fishing with his buddies at night. Joke's on him. We knew he didn't have any friends. No, not never mind. That's more my life than his. Uh, anyway, um, again, it's just a bench. But it is cool that there is storage underneath it. Now, technically, that could be... A, uh, a a fifth person sleeper you could sleep up to five on this but you're talking little little kids on a uh, on a little bunk space over there but if there is any room in this rv that absolutely did not go any further than they had to it is definitely the bathroom so starting up top here in the bathroom i do want to mention that it does have again a simple blade fan and i want to point that out because there are still some campers in this class that have no vent fan in the bathroom. And that, uh, after you have a hot pocket, you end up hot boxing yourself here uh, in this little water closet, uh, as it were. And something that was actually a nice, pleasant surprise, there's actually really fluffy, friendly space around that toilet. Now, you may have noticed how the shower walls were like completely barren of everything you are probably going to want to add like a towel bar or something to the walls. But with this being uh, what is referred to as a stick and tin camper with wood studs every 16 inches on center in the walls, you have the space to do that. Now you may also notice this RV does not have shower surround paneling. And with no skylight above the shower, taking a look here, again, just trying to be real and fair with you. I'm a little over six foot tall and you see that I could not stand up in that shower without cranking my head around a little bit. Um, so you're going to have to keep in mind, you know, is a few minutes in the shower worth saving a lot of money versus one that maybe already has a skylight? That's There's no right or wrong answer. That's a question for you to ask yourself. Um, but uh, what was I going to get at there? Oh, okay. Since this doesn't have shower surround paneling, does that mean that you're just going to waterlog and water damage your walls? No, it doesn't as long as you do it right. This is a very classic way of uh, camper shower enclosures. And I've been around long enough and I camped in RVs like this that I just know my way around them. But, but it, it means you gotta do a thing. Every time you shower, you need to make sure you take your towel and you really wipe down the walls and you turn that vent fan on to keep the air circulating, to keep everything dried out so the water doesn't stand and sink into stuff. And I've seen very old campers where people have done that over the years and never had a problem. But if you're like, uh, no, I'm not doing that, then I don't think this is the camper for you. That That's what I want to try to give you, a good, fair, real look at this thing. And if you don't like what you're seeing here, but you appreciate how we're being real with you, at least hit that subscribe button, like our video, or leave me a little note that says, hey, thanks, nerd. Now, as I've mentioned, uh, this RV was, it was made first and foremost with a price tag in mind, unapologetically. And I'm not going to try to sit here and sell like, it, it, oh man, it's the greatest RV with all the cool stuff in the world, brother. Well, it's not that. Um, but there's an interesting thing. I call it the fattening of the campers, basically, which is different from the silence of the lambs, uh, if you're familiar. Neither here nor there. Um, RVs, every single year, they keep getting heavier. They keep getting heavier. And by peeling out uh, a lot of stuff, they were also able to peel out a lot of weight. And here's the really interesting thing. This is going to be accessible and towable by a lot of vehicles that normally can't handle a fully enclosed hard-sided travel trailer, meaning not a pop-up, not a hybrid. Um, the, uh, the maximum weight of this is just over 3,800 pounds, and it's about 2,800 pounds empty dry weight. So if you have a, uh, you know, an SUV that's rated for 4,000 pounds or more, you might be in business here. Now, you know, the more above that number you are, 4,500 and up, the happier you and your vehicle are going to be. Um, you know, the uh, a mid-size uh, pickup or something like that would be a good fit here. But that's kind of the cool thing. A lot of single axle campers, they have gotten to the point that many SUVs are not really capable of taking them around. 
Now, again, you might have noticed a little bit of a color palette change. It's not just the overcast sky. We shifted over from the Wildwood skin package to the Salem skin package. Um, some dealers carry Salem, some carry Wildwood. We carry both within our lineup at different stores. They're the exact same camper. So, you know, I don't have to try to make up some story that one's better than the other. They're the same exact thing. Um, it's just a different color palette. So, uh, you kind of get your, your own little choice right there. You can see the Wildwood I've been jumping back and forth to uh, over there in the distance. Now, I get it that it's made for a price point. I've made that very clear. That awning. Oh, that awning. It's almost laughable. Like, to the point that I borderline wish the awning, like, wasn't there like it is it's it's that level of like really why did you <laughs> why did you even bother with this thing you know um and again trying to be fair very very limited campsite window coverage because of the way they built this one uh and, and if in case you're wondering why didn't they put that big sofa in the window over here on the door side and the answer is basically um length they tried to keep this thing as short, as light, and inexpensive again as possible. And this was the shortest, lightest way to build that, this kind of arrangement. If you start playing the shell game and moving floor plans around, you actually find out how the entry door is the reason that we have very little in the way of campsite windows and small campers. But like no window in the door, no window like beside the bed on the campsite. It is very, very limited here. Now these do not have that uh, hard panel enclosed accessibility like you would find on, um, well, just n not even the LE series, even the uh, the other single axle Salem Wildwoods that are out there. So kind of keep that in mind. It does still have a walkable roof, which is nice. And it does still have roof uh, ladder prep and it still has rear camera prep. So you're thinking, well, why would they spend money on features like that? And that's just the thing, they didn't. Lippert, who makes those mounts, they will basically pretty much for free give manufacturers components like that in hopes that uh, dealerships or customers like myself and yourself will uh, purchase their ladders and their cameras for a decent markup. And I don't fault them for that, that's just smart business. But that is the reason they've kind of done the one and, uh, you know, not the other. So if you prefer just a simple little vanilla sundae, maybe with a little bit of caramel or fudge drizzle, or if you prefer something uh, a little bit fruity with like a little bit of blueberry sauce, they make a different exterior either way. But again, on the inside of the RV, it's the exact same thing. Now, whether you like or dislike this one, I would be really curious to know your thoughts and your input. They went very, down and dirty aggressive on the price tag on this one. And of course, I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can always see where we have one in stock and what we're asking. This is a new model. They've only recently started shipping this out. We may not have a lot in stock at the time you check this video, but our team can certainly assist you uh, with figures if we are sold out uh, currently off our website. I, I'd be kind of curious, like, what do you think about like no propane furnace, but a uh, uh, like an electric space heat and fireplace? Um, you know, no microwave, small fridge, like, is this, did they go too far or is it really smart? Because they still make all kinds of other single axle family bunkhouse models. If you want a normal furnace, if you want a bigger fridge and a microwave, they make all that too. So this is just something new and different and um, a new price point that they haven't really accessed before. And I'd be really curious to know, is it genius? Is it insanity? Is it crazy? Is it awesome? Is it crazy awesome? I don't know, you tell me. And when you're ready, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun. <laughs> and I'm freezing, everyone. <laughs> it's cool out here today. It was 70 degrees yesterday. It's 30 right now. Welcome to Pure Michigan. Mm -hmm.